Welcome to our early morning coffee walk here in Hopalong Hollow. I'm going to do these short videos once a week. We're back on the courtyard behind the house this morning, and I'm looking at these wonderful old urns that my I got from my friend, whom I recently helped with an estate sale from her 1840s property, and she said that these urns had been on the property from long before she moved in and purchased it. So, um, now they're mine, and I've got two of them. We don't know how old they are, but they're pretty great with all their age and their moss and rustiness on them. But I decided to use these to plant dahlias in this, this year. And I'm putting the dahlias in pots this year instead of in the ground, because I realized that I had a really bad problem with moles and bowls and what other, other little digging creatures there, well, probably chipmunks too, that they were eating the tubers and they had just been gnawed to bits on a lot of my plants. This is another pot that I had planted, oh, a couple weeks ago with the tubers. And as you can see, they're starting to come out, the dahlias and all along the edges I had put, um, what are they, purple nasturtiums. Yeah, purple nasturtiums. So pretty soon I'll be able to remove this barrier from the chickens. Just waiting for those tubers to come in. And then I'll be able to use these big old pots. Here we have the ranunculus that I did directly into the pots once again. I told you why I did that. I, I had put them in trays last year. And then I transferred them to pots. And then when I transferred them to the pots, they, they just, they all died. So this time I started them in pots and they're all looking like this really, really, really good. So I'm leaving them in the pots on the courtyard and the patio and the porch. And hey, look at this. This is a miniature, I can't remember the name of it. It's just a little miniature peach tree, which takes make little miniature peaches. And we'll see if they're any good for eating, but it's very, very tiny. And uh, I'm not sure I'm crazy about this leaf color or peach tree, but it was meant as an ornamental anyway. My nursery beds in which I put peas. Now these peas were planted in January, and I read that if you put in your peas early, they get really strong stems, and I am finding that truly to be the case. Here's one that's got a real, look at this nice strong stem on that, getting ready to make some little peas for me. Now these I just put in a few weeks ago. And you can see the difference, of course they're much shorter, but look at the difference in the strength of that stem. Time to nip off the top of that. When you get about six inches tall, you want to top them off just so they'll branch out better. But look at these. They really are, they're not growing very quickly, but they really have a nice strong stem. So I guess that is one of the advantages of planting them a little bit earlier than you normally would. Here in this little bed you can also see where I have sprinkled English daisies and gilia. Gilia is not doing that well over here. But I'll tell you one thing I am finding everywhere are these little seedlings from the teasel. Now, I had a teasel growing in the corner, in this corner garden last year where you can see the comfrey and the roses and various other weeds and primroses and I knew when that thing went to seed I may have a problem with it and sure enough it is dropped seed everywhere and I have little baby teasels coming up all over the brick courtyard everywhere it's everywhere I hate to waste a, a plant I really really hate to just pull this up and throw it away because it's really an interesting plant but I'm goodness I don't want 50 teasels in my garden and I certainly don't want them growing in the courtyard. Behind this nursery bed lies the maiden's garden, which we put in from scratch last year. You, you may recall that. This was just nothing but a stretch of earth that I had dug up all the weeds from, and there were very few actual plants growing here of worth. But now we have a lot of great things going on. We have a chestnut rose. We have a Julia Child Rose, and from seed were planted a lot of Dianthus and Sweet William. And you can see that they're coming up and starting to bloom 
um, Rudebeckia, Daisy's Bee Balm, Penstemon, of course. Penstemon is all over. But what I'm very happy about right now is that I sprinkled a lot of seed in here. I just threw handfuls in this garden for a spring bloom of Flanders poppies, also known as Shirley poppies. They're just red poppies. Here's simple red poppies and blue cornflowers. And, and I just love the idea of cornflowers and poppies. It makes me think of Miss Marple, an episode in Miss Marple, which was called Sleeping Murder, I believe. And one of the characters dreamed of wallpaper with cornflowers and blue poppies. And it, you could imagine that in a field, just blue and red. So I'm going to hopefully have that just growing like crazy in here. Um, it's May, probably by the end of the month. This bed will be uh, beautiful red and blue cornflowers and poppies, amongst the other plants that probably won't bloom until later on. But amongst all those little grasses, you can see all those little seedlings coming. Look at those little poppies coming up. Yeah, I think most of those are the poppies. So that's always exciting to see little seedlings that you... Oh, and here is a sea holly that I put in mm, from a root last year. I didn't think it was going to do anything, and it didn't. But his neighbor, he looks like he's dead as a doornail. So only one sea holly. And it's blue also. There's problems in my garden are grasses. And you really need to get them before they get to this point because now it's going to drop all kinds of seeds. So my job every morning is to come in here and just pull up just pull up the seeds if i can't get to the grass i at least have got to get those seeds out before they just drop everywhere and then i'm fighting grass for a long long time in the gardens here we have simon sebastian and lydia now simon and sebastian i brought in as babies to be nurtured by a mama goose who really wanted to become a mommy and she has since passed away of old age and these guys are so obnoxious they just, they just have a really bad attitude in life on the other hand Lydia is absolutely a sweetheart don't attack or anything like that they just make a lot of noise Ooh, lots of strawberries Daylilies, there's alliums in here. And, but what I wanted to show you was the wheelbarrow. Do you remember when we planted the wheelbarrow with sweet peas and nasturtiums and chives? The plan was for everything to be blue and purple because those are purple peas, purple nasturtiums, and lavender chives, of course. So, the peas are looking good. Those little sweet peas are getting strong. They're starting to climb up the trellis. The trellis which leads up to the fruit tree and the fruit tree here we have it wow if they survive i am going to have to learn how to can peaches again it's been a long time since i've done that but wow i have got so many peaches i have to tell you i am so proud of this tree really happy about it i'm honestly never been very good with fruit and it's just my favorite thing, one of my favorite things to eat. Looks like we've got a stray crepe myrtle growing here right in the middle of the Beatrix Potter patch, which is fine. I will move it. I love crepe myrtle trees. I'll just dig that up and move it to um, another area. But I wanted to take a look at the poppies. The, the oriental poppies are going really well. The astrangia is kind of a slow grower, it seems. There it is, but here it is. It's <laughs> about to get inundated with Creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny really is a beautiful ground cover, but it really can get to be a pain in the rear end because it really is can become invasive, so I'm constantly having to keep that in check. But it's so pretty that I, I can't eliminate it completely. Even if I wanted to, it would always come back. And here we have the foxgloves getting ready to open up. But I want to show you something very odd. Look at the thickness of this foxglove stem. Now that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. See, they're supposed to look like that. Have you ever seen one that is about an inch and a half thick like this? That is totally bizarre. Let me know if you know anything about that. That is very strange. Well, Beatrix Potter Patch filling in. 
pretty good. Say goodbye. I'm going to give you a heads up on a Hopalong Hollow Emporium this Saturday, starting at 10 o'clock on this channel, where I will be featuring 10 little songbirds for sale from English robins, bluebirds, finches, and chickadees. There'll be 10 to 12 birds up for sale. And so I hope you'll join us there at the Hopalong Hollow Emporium Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Until then, bye-bye from Hop Long Hollow.